folks, me Kevin again here from Miller Productions and I'm back with another predictions video this weekend Hell in a Cell. Now I know I didn't do one for No Mercy, I have a good, very good reason. I was in Manchester for WCPW's uh, True Legacy show, an absolute fantastic night and I will be doing a review on that. But uh, I'm going to wait till they put it up on YouTube so that um, I don't want to spoil anything for you fine folks. So on to Hell in a Cell. So a lot of people are debating that having three Hell in a Cell matches completely di dilutes the idea of a Hell in a Cell match. And I'm in agreement. The whole Hell in a Cell match, it, w it, it was the match when no other match could so settle an argument. But, you know, this is the way WWE have chosen to go with it, so no, we just for the moment we'll just have to go along with it. So, right... Matches. I suppose we'll kick off with the pre-show. Uh, who have we got? We've got a six-man cruiserweight tag match. On one side, we have Cedric Alexander, Lince Dorado and Sin Cara versus Tony Nese, Drew Gulak and... Uh, uh, I think I'm pronouncing this right. Arya Davari. If I pronounce it wrong, let me know, folks. So, I'm going to go with... I screw. He was one of my favorite coming out of the Cruiserweight Classic. I'm gonna go with Cedric Alexander's team. Uh, so him, Sin Cara, and Lince Dorado picking up the picking up the win there. So let's move on to the main show. So the order of the matches hasn't been announced yet at the time of this recording. So I'm going. I'm just going off the list on Wikipedia and what and where I think some matches should fall on the card. So, I suppose we'll kick it off with. So, yeah, look, we'll, we'll, op we'll open the show the same way I want to end the show with a women's match. Dana Brooke, da or Dana Brooke, whichever way you'd like to pronounce it, versus uh, Bailey. Uh, Bailey for this one. It's you can't you can't have her constantly jobbing up to Dana Brooke because it'll it'll eventually just make her look weak and I know everyone following from NXT knows who she is but there are wrestling casual wrestling fans out there who don't watch NXT so they don't know what Bailey's really like they've seen a couple of matches with Charlotte and Sasha Banks and that but if they constantly see her jobbing up to Dana Brooke who to be honest in my opinion should go back to NXT. Uh, although I will admit she has improved somewhat. Um, so, yeah, can't have her job out to Dana Brooke anymore. So I'm going to go Bailey to win this one. Uh, then uh, I suppose we'll go with uh, some bit of tag, uh, another tag match. We have Enzo and Cass versus Gallows and Anderson. But this is a slightly tough one to call. So I'm going to kind of go with logic on this one. Both teams need wins badly. Especially the way they're, they've are they been jobbed out with it over the last few months. But the one team that needs it more is Anderson and Gallows. They, because the crap they've been put through the last six months. The whole do comedy doctor skits and all that. No, they need to look strong. Uh, whereas Enzo Castle's personality, their charisma, that can get him through a loss. So I think Enzo Cass can afford the loss more than Luke, uh, Gallows and Anderson. So I'm going to say Gallows and Anderson to win this one. Because they need to win this one. So, okay, so I suppose we go back to the Cruiserweights again. We have a one on a singles match for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick. Uh, I'll be honest, folks. I, I'm not really invested in this match. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the Cruiserweight Classic. Jeez, there were some fantastic matches. But they just seem to have watered them down since they came up to the main roster. So, I don't know. Maybe just give them a little bit more leeway with their moves and that. And make them... I don't know. It's just... Like, some of the moves, they, some of the spots they pulled off during the Cruiserweight Classic were... And yes, I was one of those ones going, holy shit, holy shit. But since, they, since they've come to the main show, they've really watered down what they can do. 
Okay, they still pull off some lovely spots every now and again. But for the most part, a lot of matches are kind of by the numbers. So, anyway, I digress. I'll go back to this particular match. Um, I'd like to see Brian Kendrick win it. Because I think he's... Well, I don't think... You know, I'm not the only one that thinks this. He's got more personality than TJ Perkins. When... Uh, especially with the video game references, don't get and don't get me wrong. That's you. Most of you know I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big gamer. I love my video games, but there's, there's times when you can run something into the ground, and T.J. Perkins is doing that. He's just, I don't know. There's something about him. I just, you know, I, I can't gravitate towards him. Joe, you know, I, if he wins, he if he wins, he wins. If he loses, he loses. At the end of the day, I don't really care. Or someone like Brian Kendrick, who's got an interesting yo know, backstory. The whole "oh, this is my last shot. Uh, if I lose, if I lose this, this is it. This is it for me." I'm going. That's an interesting story, and that's kind of that's what makes you gravitate towards a wrestler. So, as much as I'd like to see Brian Kendrick win it, uh, don't actually screw it. I'm going to go with Brian Kendrick. I want him to win it. Uh, I'm going to yeah, logic out the fucking window. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go Kendrick on this one, even though I know logically they'll probably let TJ Perkins retain, but screw it. I'm going to go uh, Kendrick on this one. Right, uh... Just realize what I did there now. I've le uh, I inadvertently left all the title matches for last. So uh, I suppose we we'll kick off with the tag time titles. Uh, the New Day versus Cesaro and Sheamus. New Day. It's as I don't get me wrong. I'd love to see Cesaro and Sheamus win it. I just I love the dynamic between the two of them, and this is I suppose this is really their shot at gold for the whole. Uh, Best of Seven series that they went through, which I don't. I know people don't like Seamus. They think he's boring, whatever. Look, okay, he's Irish, so I'm going to support his own. But you have to admit the matches between himself and Cesaro during that Best of Seven series, they were great matches. Um, the dynamic between the two of them since they were made tag partners, I think is fucking brilliant. I love it, and I really want. I really, I'd love to see the tag gold in him, but unfortunately. New Day are so close to beating Demolition's record for the Tag Team Championships. It's like two months away. Just over two months away. So, when they're this close, I can't see them dropping the titles. And if they were to drop the titles, it'll probably be to Anderson and Gallows afterwards. So, I can't, I can't see them dropping the titles this Sunday. So, I'm going to go with the New Day to win this one. And... I'm hoping that they keep Cesaro and Sheamus together as a tag team and maybe give them another run at the tag titles. Like like I said, I'd love to see them with tag gold. Be, I think they'd make a great tag uh, great tag team championships. Especially like the, the banter between them and the dynamic is just... I, I'm loving it at the moment. Um, right, folks. We're into three main events. Which is absolute bullshit for for a start because a main event the main event is there's only one main event and that's the last match of the night, as any wrestling fan will tell you this. So I don't know why they're shoving this three main event thing down our throat, but I digress. We'll move on. We'll start out with Reigns versus Rusev for the U.S. Championship Hell in a Cell match, um, or the first or first of three Hell in a Cell matches I should say. So. Which way to go with this now? Logic dictates... Uh, I'm sound like a fucking Vulcan. And yes, that is a Star Trek reference because yes, I am a nerd. But logic dictates that they're going to keep the title on Reigns. Oh, they're trying to give him that push at the moment. I don't see why. this is. If this, if this is a punishment for breaking the wellness policy, bloody hell. Um, but uh, I would love... To, to see the title go back on Rusev. How how does best way to describe it? Rusev did the same with the US or did the same with the US Championship 
that The Miz did with the Intercontinental. Those two titles got elevated within within the last six months because of the fellas that were holding them. I'm sorry. And especially, I know, I didn't cop this straight away myself. It was actually, it was actually King Ross from WCP, or from, not from WCPW, but for, well, yeah, WCPW, but from what culture? Joe King Ross that does the WTF more months. Um, he pointed this out. He goes, Rusev is cle clearly the face. Reigns is clearly the heel because of what they've been doing. And yet they're still portraying Rain or Rusev as the heel. And it was only kind of, I was kind of thinking back, and go, he's actually spot on. He goes, yeah. So I don't I don't know what W uh, creative are thinking in this. Well, to be honest, creative don't think a lot of the best of times. But um, so I, I'm going to go with Rusev. I know everyone's picking Reigns and it's probably the, safest choice but I'm gonna go with Rusev because I just love the way Rusev like I said the whole Rusev and his family thing and you know they've really been building him up as well as a heel because he's foreign racist bastards um joke joke although probably some people are racist but um I uh think yeah I'm gonna go with Rusev on this one just simply because I don't look I don't get me wrong I like Reigns but I think he just needs to fuck off from the title scene for a bit I don't know I don't know get into a feud with Braun Strowman or something Joe make him Joe make him look because I'm sorry but you've done the damage with him he's he's I don't know even disappear off screen for a month and come back I don't know rebranded or redesigned or whatever you want to call it because the current Reigns the crowd does not like him. I like I, as a performer. I think he's he's very good, but I'm thinking you gotta stop scripting his promos. Let him do talk naturally because when he talks naturally, he's actually quite good. But when he's reading off a script, my God, I might as well be watching a robot. Um, so whereas Rusev, I don't know whether it's scripted or it's ad libbed, but Rusev is very good on the mic. Rusev's good on the mic. Now I know he's got Lana backing him up, and Lana is uh, brilliant on the mic. And also on the ice. But, uh... Sorry, I, I got distracted there for a second, folks. Um, so, Rusev is a lot better. He's he's more uh, uh, charismatic. There, I got the word out. Um, so, I want to see the belt back on him. So, I'm going to pick Rusev for this one. Then we have Hell in a Cell number two. We have... And no, it's not the one you're thinking. It's going to be Owens versus Rollins. Yes, folks, I'm putting the women's Hell in a Cell match as the main event. Because that's where it should be. Uh, Owens versus Rollins. Um, I don't... I don't really have much of a vested interest in this one. Because Owens is going to retain. But it's been completely overshadowed by the list of Jericho. As we saw last Monday Night in Raw. Like when they not when they announced the universal title when they displayed it, the crowd lost their shit. They were going, "Oh my god, that thing looks horrible!" And all this, but you've in the last couple of weeks you've really devalued it. Like it Owens appears to be playing second fiddle to Jericho, and and especially last last Monday, the main story throughout Raw last Monday was Jericho's fucking list, and. That you've got a uni you've got a title match in a hell in a cell on Sunday, and your main story is a fucking list. I'm sorry, I don't get me wrong. I like the list list of Jericho sk uh, skit. It's funny, but it shouldn't be the main story in a go home raw or any raw for that matter. The main story should be a title or a massive feud, not a bloody list. I don't know. Someone was someone in creative was smoking the ganja when they came up with that idea. Um, so I don't know what the hell went on, uh, uh, what the thinking was behind that on Monday. Um, I'm gonna say Owens. Uh, I'm gonna digress. I'm gonna go back uh, to the match itself. I'm gonna say Owens to retain because I think he's going to hold. He's got. I'd, I'd say he could hold that title till Rumble. Possibly mania.
But I'm going to say Rumble. He's going to hold it that long at least. Um, uh, as far as run-ins and interferences, Jericho isn't on the card, so we're more we're going to see an interference from him or run-in at some point. People are speculating Triple H. Now it would it would be a good time to bring him in because uh, Joe, he, like I say, if Owens retains. Uh, you can't really have Rollins go after him again. So, whereas if Triple H came in and screws Rollins out of the title, again, that'll kick off the whole Rollins-Triple H feud, which hopefully... A lot of people think uh, accumulates at WrestleMania. It's a bit far out, but it's a bit far... You know, time-wise, it's still a long way off. But yeah, I could see it, you know, it could be a... Or maybe they could have you know, a match at Rumble and then the rematch at WrestleMania, do it like that. So we're not waiting six months for six months for a match like. But uh, so but yeah, so, so Triple H possibly interfere with the match, kick off that storyline, and maybe Jericho in uh, throwing his R into the match pisses off Owens, and that could kick off uh, Owens uh, the breakup of the friendship and. Uh, Kick off Owens uh, versus uh, Jericho storyline, so you, know, you could have two brand two storylines out of one match, which would be good. Which would be good. So, again, in case I didn't say it, I'm picking Owens to win this one. All right, folks, I'm putting this in the main event. WWE haven't confirmed it yet, but bloody hell, this should be the main event. This should be the show closer for Hell in a Cell. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte Flair for the WWE Raw. Women's Championship in the first ever women's Hell in a Cell match, folks. This is historic. This is the first ever. Not only if if they if this is the show closer, you will have two historic moments in one night. You will have the first, not only the first women's Hell in a Cell match ever. You will also have a women's match main eventing a pay per view on WWE. This, folks, this could be an absolute historic night. I have hesitation that WWE are going to cock it, possibly, but... Anyway, right, match result. Sasha to retain. Sasha's the hometown girl in this one. Uh, hometown of Boston. Uh, I can, yeah, she's, I can see her picking up the win here. But result aside, okay, I'm going to quickly say Sasha to win, hometown girl. What I'm worried about is, there's been rumours of Charlotte wanting to do... Uh, is it... Um, Corkscrew or whatever that the dive she does off the top rope. She wants to do that off the cell, apparently. Now WWE Creative and Backstage Management are saying no, <laughs> not gonna happen. But apparently the these two women are absolutely gung ho to do anything this bad. They want to prove that they deserve to be in it. That they are like and to, you know, the women's divisions or women's wrestling in the last year. Girls, you don't have to prove anything. We know you're as good as the fellas, if not better at times. But it's hell in a cell. Please be careful. Don't do something stupid. Uh, Sasha, I swear to God, if I see you do a suicide dive off the hell, off the cell, um, which I know you're pro. I'm sorry, sorry. The human, the way you've landed that suicide dive at times, the human body is not meant to bend in that direction. Look, be careful. But anyway, I'm saying so. Sasha to so to finish off. Sasha to retain. Uh, match of the night. Also, probably spots of the night. So, folks, this is gonna be, this. This is the out of all the matches on this card. This is the one I'm most looking forward to. Uh, this this is going to be a. This should be a great match. Um. So that's. I think that's all the matches. So it is. Right, I suppose I'll do me a little sign out. Um, uh, so those folks are my uh, uh, predictions. Um, agree, disagree? Let me know in the comments. Um, I won't be doing a live tweet session this Sunday for Hell in a Cell because unfortunately I won't be watching it live. I'll have to. Is I I'm I'm going to a Halloween party Sunday night so. I won't be home in time to watch it. So I'll have to watch it on repeat on Monday. 
with a hangover possibly or not possibly definitely uh so since i won't be doing a live tweet session i will be a little alternative do you folks yo you support me you deserve yo whatever content i can provide yo if it's a live tweet session or whatever so i'm gonna film uh I'm gonna film. I'm gonna film myself watching uh, Hell in a Cell, and I'm gonna to cut together uh, a little reactions video, and I'm gonna post that before Raw on Monday night. So hopefully, you keep an eye out for that as well. So right. So I've been Kevin from Yellow Productions. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Kevin O'Meester. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and any comments leave them below, and I shall see you at the next show, folks. Good luck.